Craft School. We're going to start a new series today on needle felting and I'll show you the materials you need, the tools that you might want to have on hand, and then we're going to make this adorable European robin and I'll show you all the tips and tricks. Let's get started. The main material that you will need when you're doing needle felting is the wool itself and this is called roving wool. You can find it in little bundles like this at your craft store, at your yarn store. I picked this one up at my farmer's market. This came straight from the sheep. And the thing about roving wool is it is 100% wool and that's important. And you'll wanna make for sure that it's not already put into a yarn form, you want it loose. I've picked out the colors of the wool for this bird. I also have two colors of felt and this will be for my wings and my tail and my beak. I have a two and a half inch foam egg and I'll tell you why I use this later on. Two little beads. I have four here. This is enough for two birds. Two beads for the eyes. I have some floral wire for the legs. Now if you can get a different color wire you can use silver or black that's fine too. But since I do have green and green does not work for birds legs I'm going to paint them with this little craft paint and I have this foam piece to use to hold it while they're being painted. For tools you'll need a felting block some felting needles, the wire cutters, paintbrush, scissors, and a hot glue gun. I also have printed out my pattern for this particular bird and you can find the link at the bottom of this video. The first thing that we will start with is our foam egg and this will answer the question which came first, the bird or the egg? We start with the egg. And all you'll need to do, this is two and a half inches, is just press it down onto the table. You want to make this a little bit more pointed. And the reason why we like to use these foam pieces inside of our uh, felted birds or animals is because then we don't have to use quite so much felt. It saves a lot of material and then we can have more birds, right? We'll take little pieces of this white, well it's cream, natural color, and I'm gonna wrap it around the egg. And then using my felting needle, You just poke it right into the foam. The little hooks on the needle will push it into the other bits of fibers and have it interlocking and that's how you get this beautiful texture. This is actually very therapeutic. Be careful not to get your fingers in the way and don't look away from your needle. You can see it's getting a little bit tighter as I go and I'll want to add a few more bits of wool to make sure that none of the foam ball is showing through. Can just place that on there and this being you know organic natural wool straight from the farm you'll find little bits of things that you can just pull them out so we really like this technique of using the foam ball inside the wool because it takes less time to make this you know body of the bird but one of the trade-offs is that you will go through needles a little bit faster because it actually breaks down the little bars on the needle. We found a source on Amazon where we can buy 60 needles for $10. So in the end, we're actually saving money by not using quite so much wool. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the shape of this, we have the point on this end. This will be the tail of the bird, and then the larger part will be uh, the head and the breast of the bird. So the next thing I'm going to do is form the head. And this is a little bit more of the traditional felting where you don't use the foam balls. And I'll use a piece of wool and bunch it up to make the ball for the head. And place it in the position. So here's the point. I'm setting it as if it's tipped back a little bit. And then by just using your needle, it will attach right into the felt below. And in this case, I'm just going around my ball because I don't, I don't want to smash this down. I want to keep it nice and round like a, like a robin head. And once I've shaped the basic form of the bird itself, I'll start layering on some color. So this really pretty kind of natural taupe color, this will be the body of my bird. You can see it here. And I'll just wrap it around the head and then around the back because I still want some of the bottom of the bird to have this cream color. 
So you just place it on and just starting to work that right into the layer below. And I think sometimes it's better to do thinner layers and then you can add to it. It's almost like painting, you know, you paint one layer and paint another layer. We're painting with wool. Use my needle to kind of guide it into the areas that I want it to be. This can take a little bit of time and if you want to, you can work on this even more. But I think I'm done on this round. You can see the little poke marks. If you want to, you can just rub it with your fingers to kind of loosen those up a little bit or you can continue to gently just work it down all over. So now I'm going to add this little orange piece on the chest. And this is a very thin light piece and I wanna make it somewhat of a circle. So I'll use the wool to kind of create, I'll just sort of stretch it and mold it into a circle. I'll place that right onto the robin's breast and then just start needling that in. And you know, I can use my needle tip to move things around. And you can always add a little bit more wool if you feel like the color is thin someplace or you need a little extra. Now we're ready to add all the details. To make the feet, I'll start with a 20 gauge wire and some needle nose pliers. About half an inch on the wire, I'll bend it and then crimp it so they're flat against each other. Bend this at a 45 degree angle. Another half inch. And this is how I'm making my claws. So I'll do that three times. Here's the third. Then I'll bring this up over the top. And then this will be my back piece to my claw. About a half inch, bend it, and then bring that back around. And that will create my bird leg. Now I'm going to move these so that it looks more like a claw. Move them together. I'll trim my wire and then I'll stick it into this foam ball where I can paint it. And there's my second leg. And now I'm going to make those green legs gray. So while I'm waiting for those legs to dry, I'm going to glue on my wings and my tail and my beak. And I've already pre-cut these using the pattern and you can see each piece tells me how many I need. And the wings and the tail are out of this taupe color and the beak is out of the gray. So I have two layers to the wing. You'll see this longer piece like this, and then the shorter one, and I'll want to glue those right on top of each other like this, and then of course make sure you do it the opposite way for the second wing. For this type of project, I think hot glue works really well. You can also use some tacky glue if you want to, if that feels more comfortable, but I like how fast it dries. So I'll just add a little bit of glue just to this top tip because I want the wing itself to be somewhat loose that looks a little more natural. Do that to both pieces. So those are ready. And then for the tail feathers, I also have two pieces and I'll add some glue right to the center and then lay that smaller piece right on top. So the placement of my feathers for the wings, you can see how it fits right along this area where I've put the darker brown felt and then the orange, it goes right in between. And again, I'll just add some glue and then place that right on top. And if you need to add a little bit more glue on the back, 
just to make sure it stays against the bird body. Flip that over and put on the other one. I really like using this technique of mixing the felted wool with felt itself because it takes a project that could, you know, take you hours and hours and actually make it very doable. This is a project that I think anyone at any age could make and it looks beautiful when it's done. It's really quite simple once you learn how to use your needle. So for the tail, I just need a little bit of glue on the back. And again, it's right where the transition of the two colors meet. And I'm just going to hold that there until it cools off. Another technique that you can use is actually needle felt that right into the back. And that will help keep it a little bit more secure. Make sure your glue is cool so that it doesn't get your needle sticky. Our beak is this really tiny little piece. And all I'm going to do is put some glue between and then curl it between my fingers so that I have a nice point. I'm gonna run a strip of glue on the edge and then very gently fold it. A dab of glue on the back of the beak on the fatter end and then I'll place that right onto his head. Now I'll add the eyes and I have these two little black beads. I like to try and get some glue into the hole of the bead because that will help it hold onto the wool itself. And then very carefully find your placement and press it into the wool. And now it has life in it with these eyes. So all we need to do is add the feet and I'll find the place that I want to put the feet, which is about halfway between in this white area. And I'm gonna slide them in first just to have my placement. And these little birds have pretty short legs. So if you need to, you can cut off some of the wire on the back. And then a really good idea is to go back in, pull it out a little bit, add some glue, and then press it back into the foam so that that glue kind of embeds into the foam of the wool. And that should keep it pretty steady. And if he doesn't quite stand up, you can adjust the feet since they're wire and make sure they're nice and flat. And there you have a little bird. You can head over to our site and find more birds that we've made with this felting technique. We also have some animals and one of my favorite is this little partridge. And look at, he's sitting in his pear tree wreath. We'll be doing more needle felting, so make sure and come back and check out our YouTube channel and subscribe below.